Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about perspective and buildings. I did a quick video last week regarding perspective and if you didn't see that I'll pop the link to that up here and that was a very simplified version of one point perspective going off into the horizon. Now we must remember with all these little rules and tricks that there are always exceptions to the rule and that these are just ideas to help you and steps to help you but there will always be obstacles and we still really need to rely on our observation and on our own eyes. So with perspective, um, usually if we're thinking of perspective going off towards the horizon, we've never really got a horizon that we can see unless we're stood looking out to the sea. Whenever we're on land, unless we're in a desert, there's a hill, there's a tree, there's houses, there's land further away, there's mountains. So you're never actually going to see the horizon as such. So you've really got to think about where that, uh, where those lines are going and try and imagine it without those obstacles in the way. So we've still got to really use our eyes and have a good think about it is what I'm saying. Because I talked last week about perspective in the clouds and the clouds going away from us. And actually one lady wrote and asked about, well, what if there aren't any clouds? Well, you know, that, that was just an example um, to show you and like I say we're still going to be changing those rules as we go along so if you look at these clouds we've actually got some directional lines here as well already in this photograph but one thing you can do is if you have a, a really lovely bright sunny day like it is today actually um, and there's nothing in the sky there's not a cloud in the sky the one way you can get some distance is if you look into it you'll see nearer the horizon it's there's much less color it's much more hazy so that's one way of getting that perspective is going a, a gradual graduated wash with your color so today I'm going to look at buildings and I've printed off this rather nice picture from Pixabay. So I'll pop the link to this reference photo in the description below. And it's just a nice little cottage and I think on Pixabay it said that this photograph was taken in Ireland. So perhaps ignore this little trough here and just look at the main farm buildings. Now last week I talked about very simple one point perspective with everything going off to the same point in the distance. Most of the time we're not going to have that, we're going to have two point perspective depending on your viewpoint and where you stood in relation to the objects. So if we could quickly look at this we can see this line of the roof here going off in this direction and if you put your ruler on that line, so we have one line there and one line there eventually in the distance those two lines meet and that's what perspective is all about really that in, as these go off into the distance eventually those two lines are going to meet and then we'll have a similar thing in this direction so if we put that across the bottom of the window and that across the top they're very very close together but eventually at one point a long long way into the distance these two rulers would meet now again, we've got to really think about still using our observational skills. Most houses aren't going to be absolutely dead straight. Some will be, some new builds will be, and you'll, that, they'll be much, much easier to draw. My house, for instance, is, was built in about, around 1611, they think, um, and there is not a straight wall on it. So although you might start drawing with those lines of perspective you still need to look very carefully and see whether they are actually straight or not because quite often they're not. I mean, look at this one here, it's, the, it's actually bowing a bit here down to this edge, it's bowing here and up here so all that detail can go in afterwards after you've drawn those first lines but that's what, what I was saying earlier about there are exceptions to the rule I mean think about the um, Leaning Tower of Pisa for one you know that's not going to comply to any laws but if you do get your perspective wrong, very wrong when somebody's looking at a building they will immediately say well that building is not going to be stood up it's going to be falling down so it's one thing that is important to really think about when you're doing um, landscapes and buildings as a beginner Okay, so I'll make a start with this now. What I've done is I've also got that picture off in black and white. So I can just look at some of the lines that we would really think about first of all and concentrate on. So if we think about the lines going in that direction, we've got the top of the chimney, which eventually is going to meet up with some of these other lines 
the top of the door there, the bottom of the window. This is actually one of those which is going against the rules really. It's going a little bit more up. It, you would expect it to be more there. But obviously it's an old house and it's a bit wonky and things aren't just quite straight. Again, this this um, wall here has a line there and a line there. So can you see how these two lines would eventually meet over here somewhere? That line there and that line there. And again, the same with these lines of the bottom of this little, um, whatever it is, a little window in there. I think when we're drawing it we'll forget about all these buildings in the distance down there and just draw the um, a little bit of a landscape. Again, we've got this line here which you would expect to go over here. So really that's probably where the top of the roof lies and this is some extra little bit of building on top. So this is all going to help your observational skills if you think about things like that. And again the window is also going off in the same direction. So then we've got the ones going in this direction. I'm sorry I'm going to have to turn it over to get to make my arm go in the right direction. So we've got this little flat roof of this smaller building and that actually joins there so that's your vanishing point, it's actually on the photograph, which doesn't often very happen, usually your vanishing point is off your picture. Um, and again, the one of the roof, and that roof, and really eventually that line of these two meeting will meet with the line of that one. Okay, and then we've got this other little roof behind, but the knot all perfectly straight because it's an old building. We can see very clearly with this trough and ourselves I wasn't going to bother with the trough but that one is a very good example of perspective and that's again the vanishing point. I'm not sure if I'm on camera there but your vanishing point's there for that trough and again those two lines going out and vanishing off over here somewhere. Okay so it's looking at those angles to begin with, getting them roughly in the right place. Think about your measurements as well. So things like this you've got that wall there is a similar height as this distance here so you can more or less split that in house in half around there somewhere. So look at your measurements but look at the angles as well and draw that lightly in pencil and then on top of that come in and do all these extra little bits of detail um, with, you know, that make the building and give the building the character. Okay, so I'll set off now and draw that uh, little house. Also, don't forget, it's not just the building that, that has perspective. Obviously, the fields and things do as well. So get some directional lines in. So this grass here, I think it shows up better on the coloured version, but I think probably there's a bit of a path behind here where people have been walking and so the grass hasn't grown. So you get that natural line between those two grasses. And that's a good line to help with the perspective as well. And maybe if there aren't any lines there, if you've got a perfectly manicured lawn, it's handy now and again just to pop a line in just uh, could be a row of flowers or anything, anything to give you that aid to take the eye in the direction you want it to go in. But don't forget, with your perspective, everything is going off in this direction and that direction and you really need to bring your eye back into the painting. Um, so you want a focus and in this case it's quite nice that we've got a little red door, I don't know if you can see that, but that door's red so you could actually make that a lot brighter and make a focal point of that area, perhaps the sun shining through this gap here and that would bring the eye, settle the eye more into the middle. Also the clouds, if you brought the clouds in like this, after the, your eye had gone out with the perspective this way it would bring it back in with the clouds and again with some directional lines from the grass. Okay so I'll Go away for a moment and I will draw this and then I'll come back to you later on and we'll just pop a little bit of watercolour over the top of the drawing.
that was just a very quick drawing using a pit pen and the size I used was 0.5 so obviously this pen is um, water fast but you do allow it to dry once you finish your drawing now I do my drawings freehand those of you that watch regularly will know that I prefer working freehand because I feel it's a bit more expressive but if you want to use a ruler and measure you know check your measurements against each other I do everything by eye and sometimes at the end I'll think oh that's not quite right or whatever but don't forget whoever's going to be looking at your picture doesn't have this picture in front of them so if something's a tiny little bit off you might notice it to the photograph but nobody else is going to notice it as long as the perspective's right and it looks like that's a nice solid building. But do use your ruler if you want to. I just don't like using it. That's just my preference. Okay, so I've done not too much detail. You could do much more detail than this if you wanted to. I did a little bit of cross hatching just to show where the shade was. So obviously we've got the light coming from this side and we've got a shadow cast by the chimney um, and that little wall and things there. I should have actually put a bit more shadow on this wall as well. And one or two directional lines with the ground and as you can see I've done just a few indications of the land around I've not really done a lot of detail at all so the colors that I've got out now in watercolor I'm not going to put too much on I'm just going to keep them very light washes and let the drawing show through because this is actually a mixed media pad it's not a watercolor paper it's just a mixed media Faber-Castell one so I don't want to absolutely soak it with water so I've got cerulean blue I've got raw umber, burnt umber, raw sienna and this one is sap green just to begin with and I'm going to keep this nice and simple and just well it's nice when you've done um, a drawing in pen and got that nice detailed line to keep those lines and not lose them like I said before you might want to put some directional lines in with your sky rather than having a flat wash And again you can get some tissue and lift some clouds out if you want but I don't think I'm going to bother I'm just going to keep it very simple and actually now I'll just add a tiny touch of um, let me just think some alizarin into that to make that a little bit purpley a little bit grey and I'll use that for those distant hills over here And then a little bit more of the cerulean for the lake or sea or whatever it is and I'll add some of that alizarin into there as well for the reflection of that land over there and you can lift a bit of that out as well if you want it does actually look on the photograph as if we've got some sun coming across that and then the, the fields themselves so again with your landscape you could do as much detail as you wanted you could put all that background in I think there's a village or something down in the bottom there's, there's uh, oh no it may be um, actually the things that I'm thinking were buildings actually might be a pile of um, bales I think it's not always easy to tell on a photograph at such distance you can see here I think down here we've got some bales, we've certainly got lots more fields and another road and there's another little building here so if you wanted to put all that in if you've got the time you can do that as well. But I just wanted to put some very very quick washes just to indicate where that grass was and the land as opposed to the building because don't forget your building's the focus of this it's not the land that's the focus really I did put a little poll on um, the other day on my community area of my YouTube channel. If you haven't seen that, you can go over to my channel and look in the community section and there's a poll there asking you what you would prefer me to teach you with the drawing. And at the moment, Landscapes is coming out on top. So of course I'll carry on doing a, a, a nice variety of things. Um, but it just gives me a really good idea of what you really would like to do so um, if you want to pop over and fill that poll in I had a few things to choose from flowers and people and buildings and things so it gives me a good idea of what you prefer I'm not entirely sure 
I've not been to Ireland. I'm not entirely sure about what what this is. This it's it's maybe thatched roof, but this looks like a, a, a stone slab coming down the side of the roof. Maybe somebody from Ireland will tell me what. It's obviously a stone building here. I, we've got on my front porch. It's made out of one big slab of um, stone. It might be interesting to know, but I think it's probably all thatched. You can see I'm not worrying about the painting, I'm just popping on the colour because it's all going to show through that um, paint as it dries, it's going to go a lot lighter and we're still going to have that cross hatching and we're still going to have the detail there so we're going to be able to see that building. And I've kept the colours really light to give us that feel of a sunny day and I will add a few stronger colours in a minute. Sorry about my creaky chair. So thank you to everybody who's already done that po little poll that I did. It's most helpful to me to know what you like doing. Okay. So you can see this paper's buckling quite a bit and I've got a bit of a cauliflower going on here. I've perhaps put a bit too much water on for this paper. Let's put a grey colour in the in the window. And you might want to do it wet on dry, you might want to put a lot more detail in. So now I'm just going to pick up some colours straight from the palette, nice and thick, without any water added. So first of all some lemon yellow just into the foreground and we could make some little bits of grassy shapes with those, just follow some of those lines. Um, it's still very wet so it's all going to go into that but it just brightens up that foreground a lot makes it a lot more sunny. We could maybe have the sun coming through here somewhere. This bush at the back might be yellow. That's just giving it a little bit of extra light. And actually we'll just pop a little bit of yellow on the other side of that chimney as well, just make it look like the sun's shining down that side of the house. So these colours are not the colours of the photograph, but that doesn't matter. It was more about the drawing and just making a nice sunny little picture. And if you're using a paper that does start to cockle like this, just carefully with a dry brush just suck some of that colour up where it's pooling because otherwise that's going to go back out and make a, a cauliflower. I mean it doesn't really matter for this, it's just a little practice. but. If you're worried about that, just with a very, very dry brush, squash all the water out of it and then you can suck it up carefully. And then again, straight from the pan, I'm going to get some cadmium red and we're going to make that door nice and bright. Like I said earlier, that's going to make that... And with a dry brush, so it actually... Sorry, it's going to make that uh, a bit of a focal point. And doing it with a dry brush means it looks like a bit of a distressed old door. And a little bit more with a finer point hopefully on my brush and we'll do that little window and just having that area of red in that in one place um, gives us a little bit more interest and you can see already it's drying a lot paler So just to bring that foreground forward, I'm going to put some more green straight from the pan. And you could carry on and it's when to stop really, isn't it? But with your detail and your colour. Don't forget when you're doing an ink and wash drawing, you don't want to put really, really thick colour on that's going to cover up all your lines of your drawing. And now that's starting to dry a little bit, I'll go back to that first colour that I used on the house and just go over one or two of those shadows just to re-emphasise where it's, it's darkest there. And that just picks up the shape of the roof as well. And 
and here sort of bending round that thatch is very thick at the edge there's obviously a bit of shadow under there but this is all detail that you could go on and on with building it up and building it up but we don't really want to do that we just want to keep it quite simple And you'll notice um, where I've done the stones, I've not done every one. Do the cornerstones, these are really obvious where the cornerstones are, nice big stones. But don't do every one, but do indicate the direction that they're going in. Okay, so I think that's everything. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Let me know how you go on in the comments below. Um, don't forget you can get this photograph from Pixabay and the link will be in the description to that. And I'll also put a link down there, if I can, to that community poll. I'm not sure if I can link that. If I can't, just go to my channel page and across to community and you'll see that little poll there. But thank you for joining me and I'll be back again soon with another tutorial or demonstration and I'll look forward to seeing you then. Enjoy your painting and bye for now.